Hello, in this video we are going to take a look at these three raw photos of the Milky Way and turn them into these final edits using only Adobe Lightroom and the presets that I have been working on for the past few weeks that are specifically made to work with images of the night sky. And these are not those ordinary like one click of a button presets that you may be used to from Lightroom but instead it is a set of both global and local adjustments that you can use for yourself so today I'm going to walk you through how to use those presets in order to create your own edit and also how you can get those presets for yourself. So let's get started. Okay, so we are here in Lightroom and we are going to start with this image which I have taken like two years ago on my vacation to Italy. And I was using a kit lens and my APS-C camera, the Canon 70-70D. So let's see what we can pull out out of image taken with this kind of equipment. So all I have done from this image from the actual RAW is I have adjusted white balance as you can see the original white balance looked like this and then I have settled for a white balance that looks like this and I didn't want to include changes in white balance in my presets because this is very subjective to your liking and also it depends on the camera that you're using, it depends on the environment, it depends on a lot of factors and it also is not really fair to do like before and after comparisons between images that have vastly different white balance settings. So we are going to start with an image that looks like this with only white balance adjustments straight from the RAW. So let's collapse this and let's see what kind of global adjustments do we have. So right here as you can see we have a set of global adjustments, we have three types of contrast, we have an ISO error noise reduction and this is pretty neat because actually you don't need to think about what ISO did you use to shoot your image. This preset will automatically adjust the noise reduction that is needed depending on the ISO that you were using. So if you were using a higher ISO like for instance 6400 it will apply more noise reduction and if you use something like a 800 or maybe 400 if you use a tracker it will apply less noise reduction. So this is pretty Neat. And also we have those two presets that are kind of my favorite, Nightscape Base 1 and Nightscape Base 2. As you can see on this image, if I hover over, look at the bottom part of this image. It is suppressing those tungsten lights from the environment and this is generally designed to deal with light pollution if you have some light pollution in your images, which we will see in example number 3. And then we have some color grays that we will be applying at the final stages of my edit, so I'm going to skip talking about them from now. So I'm going to actually start from Nightscape Base to and this also includes the ISO or noise reduction so you don't need to click that again so just click on this one and you can see that it already pops out Milky Way quite a lot from what we had before and it also suppresses a lot of these oversaturated and overblown lights from our environment right here. So this is the base and then we are going to apply a set of local adjustments and for that I also have presets. So let's start by darkening the sky in a way that preserves the Milky Way as much as it is possible. So we are going to go to the graduated filter and then right here in the effect we are going to select KP as my initials KP and Darken Preserving Milky Way. And then I'm just going to draw a graduated filter. As you can see, it is pretty strong. I'm going to move it actually way down. And right here, you can actually adjust the amount. You can make less and you can also use more of this. I'm going to settle for something around 15, I think. Looks pretty good. And then what I want to do is I want to pop out the Milky Way so it stands out from the image. And for that, I am going to use a brush. So I'm going to select the brush right here and then make sure that the new is clicked. And then we're going to change change the effect from darkened sky to the KP Milky Way pop. And then you can also adjust the size of your brush if you want, make it fit the actual size of the Milky Way depending on the focal length that you were using. And then you are just going to brush over the Milky Way. And as you can see, it pops out really, really nice. It is bringing out a lot of color in the Milky Way and a lot of contrast. If we can see the before and after, you can see that the Milky Way pop local adjustment really, really makes a difference. And then on top of that, we can actually apply some micro contrast. So if you want to use a new brush, make sure that you first click the new button right here. So we're going to hit new and then we're going to change the brush to KP micro contrast and then make it maybe a little bit smaller. And then we're going to brush in this area around the core, bringing this micro contrast in the Milky Way. And it already looks pretty good. What is cool about those local adjustments is that you can actually adjust the amount of it after the fact. So you can scroll left to have less of the effect and right to have more of the effect so you can really tailor it down to your actual needs. And then as a final step for this image we are going to add a vignette so I'm going to go to this radial adjustment right here and I'm going to select KP vignette and then I'm just going to draw an oval somewhere around this size probably maybe tilt it a little bit maybe reposition and then we can also feather it out as you can see you can also adjust the amount something like this 
probably looks pretty good and hit done right here and then if you check out the before and after you can see that the difference is quite massive. So even if you are shooting with a kit lens and a relatively cheap DSLR like a Canon 70 you can already get great images with this kit by using those presets. Okay, so let's take a look at example number two. So this is the image number two. I have taken this in the mountains of Slovakia and I was using the same camera, the Canon 70 but a different lens. I was using the Tokina 11 to 20 millimeters f2.8, which allowed me to use a lower ISO of 3200. And for this one, I'm going to start with one of the contrasts. I think a medium looks pretty good. And then I'm going to also apply the ISO over noise reduction. Again, taking into consideration my ISO, I don't even need to think about how much noise reduction do I need. Then again, we are going to darken the sky a little bit, preserving the Milky Way. So we're going to go to the graduated filter and then select the darkened preserving Milky Way. Draw it something like this. As you can see, it is pretty strong on this image. So we are going to dial it back quite a bit and something like this probably looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna hit done right here. And then as you can see on this image, we have a little bit of light pollution here around the horizon. So we can use another one of my local presets in order to mitigate that. So we're going to select the brush and we're going to select the KP reduce light pollution. Again, adjust size of the brush, make it a little bit, uh, maybe something like this and then just brush it over. And as you can see, the light pollution kind of goes away. So just brush it in, something like this. And it looks pretty good. Again, before and after, this is the before, this is the after. As you can see, it removed quite a lot of light pollution. So right now we're going to make the Milky Way pop again. So we're going to again, hit the new button. This is very important, new, and then change the brush to KP Milky Way pop, make it a little bit bigger and then just brush in around the Milky Way to make it pop really, really nice. And then also what you can do instead of applying the micro contrast, you can actually make it more fine tuned. So what you can do is you can go to new and then you can select one of these two brushes, KP burn, which darkens the darks and KP dodge, which brightens the brights. And this is the technique called dodging and burning. Basically what you do is that you selectively brighten the bright parts and darken the dark parts, which applies the micro contrast in just the parts of the image that you want. And also you can use those amount sliders to apply more or less of the effect, depending on what you actually like. So let me show you how to do that. So at first we're going to select the dodge and then we are going to make it smaller and we are going to brush over those bright parts of the Milky Way. So here, here and also here. And then we are going to hit the new and also we are going to darken the darks, so the burn. And then we are going to brush over these parts. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. And what is cool about those local adjustments is that you can use the same preset multiple times. So again, we are going to select new and we can make another round of KP Milky Way pop. This time around, I'm going to brush over this area. And as you can see, it pops right of the image and it looks pretty awesome. So again, we are going to apply the vignette at the end. So something like this, uh, tilted, reposition, maybe a little bit larger, maybe a little bit weaker this time and then hit done. And then as a final step, you can actually apply one of the color grades so you can make the image a little bit more blue. You can make the image neutral, but with a little bit more contrast. As you can see, the colors are pretty much the same, but a little bit more contrast. And also you can make it orange if you want. I know that some people like to have their nightscapes orange because actually it turns out that the colors of the night sky are not blue at all. They are kind of brownish or orange. So you can choose one of these. And these three presets make use of the new color grading palette that was added in the newest version of Lightroom and the fall of 2020. So you can use one of these in order to uh, like give it a final touch to your image. So let's take a look at the before and after of this image. And as you can see, the before and after looks pretty dope. As you can see, the Milky Way pops right out of the image. And I was using only Lightroom. I didn't even need to bring this image into Photoshop, which for me, it's, it's pretty awesome. So let's take a look at image number three right now. So this third image is actually one of my recent images. This was taken with a Canon EOS R and with a manual lens, the Lawa 15 millimeters F4. So as you can see, you don't even have the indication of which aperture was I using right here, the EXIF. So we are going to need to take an additional step, which I wanted to show you right now. So we are going to start this edit by applying one of the nightscape base. As you can see, this is how the first one looks. This is how the second one looks. And I kind of like this look of the second one again. So I'm going to select this one. And a lot of the magic of this preset actually lies in a custom color profile, because if I expand this, as you can see, the profile that we have is reduced LP2. And if we hit here, as you can see, I have two custom color profiles. I have reduced LP 
and reduce LP2 and depending on the image that you are using one of the other is going to make a better job and if I take it away as you can see a lot of light pollution is coming back here and if I bring it back to like 120 it is dealing with a lot of this light pollution. So this is a pretty cool thing that is not normally possible using Lightroom, but if you have those custom color profiles, you can make use of them right in Adobe Lightroom. So as you can see, the image is pretty dark in the corners right here. And this is because Lightroom was not able to apply the lens correction profile automatically because again, I was using a full manual lens. So I have to scroll down here to lens corrections and actually apply the lens correction myself. So I'm gonna select uh, the lens, which was, um, Venus Optics, Lawa 15 millimeters, and selecting this color profile takes care of these edges. So again, what we can do is we're gonna collapse this and we're going to make the Milky Way pop. So again, Milky Way pop right here, make it a little bit bigger, brush over the Milky Way, just like that. Again, we can apply some micro contrast here. So we're going to uh, what? hit the new first. If you don't hit the new, it will actually replace your brush. So you don't want to do that. Definitely before doing a second adjustment, you always want to click this new. So we're going to apply the micro contrast a little bit smaller this time. And then we're going to brush this in somewhere here. We can actually try to handle more of these light pollution right here with this brush. So again, new and then reduce light pollution, make it a little bit bigger and then just brush over here in order to subdue more of this light pollution as you want. And this looks pretty good. I'm just gonna hit done and then I'm gonna apply a vignette. So I need to change it to KP vignette, of course. And then in the radial filter, I'm just going to draw an ellipse, something like this, something like this, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit more feathered out, maybe a little bit weaker. And this looks like a pretty good edit. Again, let's check out the before and after. And this image looks pretty good. So as you can see in a nutshell, these are the astrophotography presets that I have been working for for the past few weeks for Adobe Lightroom. And I am very, very excited to finally be able to share them with you guys. So leave a comment down below, letting me know if this is something that might be useful for your workflow. If you want to get them for yourself, head over to the description of this video and click on the first link. And also I would love to see your work and what you can actually create using those presets so you can share your Instagram handles down below in the comments or wherever I can see your images. And right now, if you want to learn more about editing Milky Way photos and astrophotography in general, maybe something more complicated like taken uh, with an astro tracker, definitely check out these two videos. They might be very interesting to you as well. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe right here for future videos, new videos every single week and have fun with the presets. Bye-bye.